Hi, everyone. Uh, just a few reminders as to the pandemic protocols from the Archdiocese and the Government of Ontario. Please wear your mask while inside the church. Please refrain from singing. There will be no collection during Mass, so you are invited to use the donation basket and boxes at each entrance. Please ensure you fill out an attendance ballot for each weekend Mass in the tent. A limited number of printed bulletins are now available for anyone who wishes to pick up a copy. To avoid the handling of bulletins during uh, or before Mass, we are following the recommended guidelines of the Archdiocese concerning the distribution of printed materials during this time. Therefore, bulletins will be available at church entrances and may only be picked up upon leaving Mass. So, good evening everyone. Um, the St. Augustine Parish welcomes you to the source and summit of Christian life the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. Today is the 23rd Sunday of Ordinary Time. And today's Mass is being offered for the people of the parish. And we wish to extend a special welcome to Rory Van Oft and his family. Rory is making her First Communion today. Please stand for our opening hymn.
Let us pray. O oh God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Jesus Christ, your Son, lives and reigns with you, the image of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, So you, O son of man, I have made a watchman for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, O wicked one, you shall surely die and you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from their ways, the wicked person shall die in their iniquity, but their blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked person to turn from their ways, and they do not turn from their ways, they shall die in their iniquity, but you will have saved your life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sisters, owe no, owe no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Project Mercury. Jesus spoke to the disciples. If your brother or sister sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. Now if he listens, he or she listens to you, you have regained your brother or sister. But if the person does not listen, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the person refuses to listen to them, tell them to the church. And if that person refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. The Gospel of the Lord. We're very quiet tonight. You hear the word of the Lord and what you say. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to our Jesus Christ. This interchange that happens within Mass, so very important. It's been often said before you go to bed at night and you have an argument, something goes wrong to reconcile with one another or that person. What's the best way to repair a damaged relationship? Jesus offers his disciples spiritual freedom and power for restoring a broken or injured relationship. That's key, restoration, restoring the relationship. You know, whether it's among nations or, you know, a couple is having a, a struggling time or within reconciliation itself, it's a sacrament, restoring broken relationships. What can we learn from Jesus' instruction about how to mend a damaged relationship? As we hear in the Gospel today, if you feel you have been wronged by someone, Jesus says the first step is to speak directly, but privately to the individual who has done the harm. Think of someone, take them aside, or have some that moment you may have with a friend or spouse or loved one. One of the worst things we can do is brood over our grievance. You know, it's people that spend many years brooding over grievances or hurts that have come our way. This can poison our mind and heart and make it more difficult to go directly to the person who caused the damage. So if we truly want to settle a difference with someone, we need to do it face to face. That's a beautiful thought. To do it face to face. You know, we live in an impersonal, impersonal world. And so much technology, you go to the bank, you don't have to go to the teller anymore. It's all, it's all mechanics now. Less than the person, in, in person. If this fails to it in its purpose, then the second step is to bring another person or person, someone who is wise and gracious rather than someone who is hot-tempered or judgmental, someone who is calm and cool and very nice. The goal is not so much to put the offender on trial, but to persuade the offender to see the wrong 
and to be reconciled. To be reconciled. And if this fails, then we must still not give up, but seek the help of the Christian community. Note the emphasis here is on restoring a broken relationship, but seeking the help of other Christians who hopefully will pray and see the solution for reconciliation based on Christian love and wisdom rather than relying on coercive force or threat of legal action such as a lawsuit. My thoughts go back to a time which I will never forget in my priesthood back in May 14, 2014. I was at St. Martin Porus Church in Bell's Corners when an intruder entered the church in the middle of a stormy night. And oh yes, they were not to pray or say the rosary, but cause harm. And it was not quite a hate crime. We tried to convince the police at the time, is this not a hate crime? You know, graffiti and taking out the tabernacle and vandalism and so on. And yes, ending up to take the tabernacle out of the church. The unthinkable among, yes, graffiti and trash in the hall through the night. For the tabernacle, my thoughts was gone. It would be in the depths of the Ottawa River tomorrow. But it wasn't until late September the police called. We have your tabernacle. They found it shortly after one of the perpetrators called. I have to see you, Father, face to face. Never forgot that phone call. Has to be face to face. Okay. This is on a Wednesday. How about Saturday afternoon around 2 o'clock? Saturday came. Two of the three vandals arrived. These, these guys were 20, 19, 20 years of age. Weren't kids. But meanwhile, I arranged to have two other people from the parish council to join me. I wasn't going to be alone. One of whom was a plain clothes police officer. But I basically just started the conversation around the big table. What happened here? Why did you enter the church in such a way? You proceed to speak how they were drunk and on drugs. And he went on to say, we panicked. We had the, this gold box. But there was an inscri inscription on the top of it to a child. Basically, we thought it was cremated remains. So we we threw it in the bush. Now, this is the tabernacle with consecrated hosts. It's over here, the blessed sacrament chapel on the side, taking that out of the, that weighs a ton, by the way. But it does happen throughout the world. It looks like gold, there's money in there. You know, all those kinds of things. But then we proceeded to speak about reconciliation, community service, and the meaning around restorative justice. No charges were laid that day. So yes, it was a learning curve when the police would follow up on community service for these fellows. The tabernacle was returned and sent off to be cleaned and small repair, repairs. Wow, you might say. Well, if you've ever been to uh, Bell's Corners on Old Richmond Road, there's three different Christian churches a few minutes apart. And at the very end of that street is a very large mosque. The Muslim people that are there. Each of these worship spaces has had their share of vandalism over the years. St. Mark pours ten times over many, many years. This church has been spared. I'm in my sixth year of a six-year uh, you know, term here. I find it very striking. Your protection.
detective here, I guess, quite a bit. So in all of this, pray for the offender, for healing and reconciliation. Could you do that? The power of prayer at that church was on for weeks and weeks. I truly believe the power of prayer had the police phone eventually and said, we have your tabernacle. So what's this all about reconciliation? What must we do? Jesus seems to say that we have the right to abandon stubborn and obdurate offenders and treat them like social outcasts. The tax collectors and Gentiles were regarded as unclean by the religious-minded Jews. And they resorted to shunning them away. Get away. However, we know from the Gospel accounts that Jesus often had fellowship with tax collectors and public sinners. Check it out. He ate with them. He even praised them. At times, Jesus refuses no one who is open to receive pardon, healing, and restoration. These three guys have a whole learning lesson on restoration. They walked away in tears. They never had that experience. When you are offended, think of it, when you are offended, are you willing to put aside your own grievance and injury in order to help your brother's wound? The Lord Jesus wants to set us free from resentment, ill will, and unwillingness to forgive. The love of Christ both purifies and sets us free to do good to all, even those who cause us grief. But the call to accountability for what we have done and failed to do is inevitable and we can't escape it. Both in this life and on the day of judgment when the Lord Jesus will return. But while we have the opportunity now, friends, we must not give up on praying for those who cause us offense. With God's help, we must seek to make every effort to win them with the grace and power of God's healing love and wisdom. Those guys that day, I remember, they walked away changed. Police then followed up and committed a service. Do you tolerate broken relationships? Or do you seek to repair them as God gives you the opportunity to mend and restore what is broken. Back to the opening song. Lord, make me an instrument of your healing love and peace. Give me wisdom and courage to bring your healing love and saving truth to those in need of healing and restoration. So we rise to confess. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all angels, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation down from heaven. But the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified on Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. This kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life. 
proceeds from the Father and the Son. The Father and the Son is adored and glorified. Who has spoken to the prophets? I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I can trust one baptism for forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us seek the Father's will and his response and care for these prayers we raise to him. For Pope Francis, all bishops and priests, may, may they be the first to show an invincible trust in the Lord in times of difficulty. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who govern nations and hold positions of authority, may the Holy Spirit guide them in their work and decisions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all teachers and students who are returning to classes, especially the young children, may Jesus and Mother Mary protector of children, be with them and make their school year a safe and happy one despite the virus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffered greatly because of COVID-19, may Jesus and Mary be with them. We pray for the sick. For all of those who had surgeries and medical procedures canceled, for the unemployed, for small business owners who have lost their businesses, and especially for residents of long-term care homes who have suffered the most. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick, especially those named in our parish bulletin, may God provide them with the strength and care that they need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are dying or have died, may they enter into life everlasting in God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of goodness and love, you hear us so many prayers in our hearts and time, knowing they're answered in your good time. For these and those within ourselves, asking that blessing again. Through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, my sacrifice and prayers may be acceptable to God, 
the Almighty Father. O oh God, who give us the gift of true prayer and peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty. By partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and in heart through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's truly right and just that we should give you thanks and praise, O God Almighty Father, for all you do in this world through our Lord Jesus Christ. For though the human race is divided by dissension and discord, yet we know that by testing us, you change our hearts to prepare them for reconciliation. Even more, by your Spirit, you move human hearts, that enemies may speak to each other again. Adversaries join hands, and people seek to meet together. By the working of your power, it comes about, O Lord, that hatred is overcome by love. Revenge gives way to forgiveness, and discord is changed to mutual respect. Therefore, as we give you ceaseless thanks to the choirs of heaven, we cry out to your majesty on earth, but without any acclaim. Holy. Accept this also together with your Son, 
And in the same banquet, graciously to endow us with his very spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Fritz der Paul and Terence our bishop, Marcellus Coeditor, and all the bishops in your entire people. Just as you gather us now at the table of your son, so will also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, their blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God of money, Father, the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, now and forever.
First Communion. This is a big night for you.